Okay. Augustine Ubaldi is an airport and railroad engineering expert. He joins us now live by phone. So what are the first questions in your mind, Gus, as you look at uh, what took pay place in Hoboken this morning? Well, you know, I think you've touched on some of them. Bill Hammer mentioned it. I, I think someone just earlier was talking about the condition of the engineer. Uh, first and foremost, the engineer is in control of the train. He, he gets signals, he has certain rules that he's supposed to follow when he's coming into that station, and he has the, con the, the controls that will make it happen. So the question comes out to why. Uh, I think someone mentioned that there's speculation that he had some catastrophic medical emergency. Uh, I heard somebody else talking that, uh, looking at video, the train was maybe going 10, 15 miles an hour. So, you know, uh, again, without the black box coming out and telling us how fast the train was going, whether a brake application was being made, those are the things that are going to need to be be looked at. All right, but, um, but what about a brake failure? I mean, brakes sometimes fail on cars. Do they fail on trains as well? When they fail, they fail safe. Uh, unlike your automobile, you know, like the, the, Hollywood, the Hollywood movies where the bad guy cuts the, the brake cable, brake lines on the hero's car and he's, as just as he's going down a steep hill and the brakes don't work, the fluid in a train brake is air. And if that fluid evaporates, it leaks out, it will set the brakes. So if something like that occurred, then the train would go into emergency and it would stop. You would not be in a situation where you'd be operating without brakes. It can happen, but on older style trains. For example, it happened in 1953 in the Pennsylvania Railroad when a train crashed into Union Station. But the type of equipment that you're using here on New Jersey Transit wouldn't have that feature on it, so that sort of thing wouldn't happen. And if that were the case, then the train would have been able to stop at the station before. It's not something that just accidentally breaks. Talk about the physical controls that the engineer would have been using. We're all familiar with cars, obviously. You've got a brake pedal and a gas pedal, maybe a clutch. Uh, but on a train, those controls are generally operated by hand, a sort of a rheostat that the engineer holds on to. Isn't that correct? It, 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 exactly. It's, it's not, not unlike the throttle in an aircraft, okay? Uh, and so he's got a number of controls ahead of him. He may have one that is the throttle, and it might be a combination of throttle and brake. So he pushes it forward when he wants to go forward. He pulls it back when he wants to brake. He may have an independent brake. Uh, he may even have a, a mushroom button that he hits to dump the air, as I was explaining, and put the train into emergency. So those are the features that he has. He may have a cab signaling system where instead of having a signal on the side of the track, telling him whether to go like a traffic signal he'll have it it'll show up real time on on a display at his console and he'll know whether he needs to slow down or not so if if an engineer if an engineer were stricken by a fainting spell or a heart attack something like that what devices are in place to slow down that train well, a lot of trains have what they call like a dead man switch or an alerter where every 20 seconds or so the operator has, gets, a, gets a little horn and he has to acknowledge it. If he doesn't, it says, wait a second, I'm not being acknowledged. I need to slow the train down. I need to take control of the train. There may also be uh, signaling systems, and I know we talk, you, you just talked to Bill about uh, positive train control, but there's a portion of positive train control that's existed for over 40, 50 years called automatic train protection or cab signaling. And if that's in place, when a train goes past a particular location and he gets a code that says slow the train down, if the engineer does not acknowledge that code and then take action within the specified time, the train will do it for him. Now, when you come into a complex like Hoboken with all these trains, they may slow them down to 15 to 20 miles an hour. And I think at this point, it's, it's almost like the, uh, uh, the flight directors on aircraft, it'll fly you to the airport and bring you within maybe a couple of hundred feet of the runway, at which point they expect the pilot to take over and manually land, land the plane. 
And that could be a situation here. Don't know what the signal system is like at Hoboken. So I can't, you know, at this point, I can't speak to it. But they may decide that at this point, okay, it, the, the, the track complex, the, the track arrangement is so complex, it, it'd be hard to put in all these signals. And so we're going to allow the engineer to take over at this point. And, you know, the alerter may have just gone off. And then he has his heart attack. And so no. there isn't enough time. I mean, those are the kinds of things, you know, that will start coming out as the NTSB and the FRA start investigating. They'll you, start, you know, they'll find out wh what kind of, what was available on this train. You mentioned uh, aircraft. I know you're a pilot. Mm -hmm. Air, airline pilots, commercial pilots have to get uh, medically checked every six months. Is there a similar requirement for train crews? Um, I don't recall what the... Uh, the health requirement is uh, it, it could be something out of New Jersey Transit where you get inspected every, you know, uh, you get a medical, let's say, every year. Uh, air, you know, air traffic, uh, uh, air tra uh, transport pilots, ATP, get a class one medical that's every six months. Commercial pilots, like if you're flying for uh, a charter line, uh, is every, uh, every year. And then uh, a class Three, which is, you know, you get into your little Cessna and go flying is every every uh, three years. Yeah, every two, oh. to, two to three years, depending on age, I know. Yeah, well, uh, depending on age and right. depending on what you're flying. Right. Okay. Gus Ubaldi, um, um, an aviation as well as railroad expert. We appreciate your insights. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.